Every photographer knows that autofocus can make or break a moment. In wildlife photography, it's the difference between a sharp, expressive image and a missed opportunity. With Nikon Z9, photographers expected near perfection, especially after the release of its dedicated bird detection mode. But here's the surprise. Many users, including professionals, are finding that animal eye tracking still outperforms bird mode when photographing birds. That discovery challenges expectations, and it's exactly what this test set out to explore. The experiment begins with a simple question. Is Nikon's animal eye tracking better for birds than its own bird mode? Using the Z9 paired with the 100-400mm lens and the latest firmware version 5.20, the goal was to find out how each mode performs in real-world shooting conditions. It wasn't about charts or lab tests. It was about what really happens when you take the camera out into the field. The beach becomes the testing ground. Gulls, with their classic bird shape and clean lines, make ideal subjects. They're common, predictable, and offer the perfect opportunity to compare performance. The test starts in bird mode. The camera identifies the bird, but something is off. The system struggles to pick up the eye, sometimes even the head. The focus clings to the body, skipping the critical details that give life to a wildlife shot. Then, with a switch to animal mode, the story changes instantly. The eye appears sharp and consistent, as if the camera suddenly understands what the subject truly is. At first glance, this result is confusing. Bird mode should be optimized for birds, yet it's falling behind. The tests are repeated, again and again. The conclusion is the same. Animal mode consistently detects eyes faster and holds them longer. It's not about one lucky shot, it's a pattern. Some viewers might argue, maybe the settings weren't right. Maybe bird mode needs a different autofocus area. So, the test shifts. Wide area large, wide area small, and auto area AF are all explored. The logic is that narrowing the focus box should help the algorithm understand where to look. But even with these adjustments, bird mode continues to miss eyes at medium and long distances. It sometimes grabs the head, occasionally flickers to the eye, but never locks with confidence. Meanwhile, animal mode stays steady, finding the eye and maintaining lock even when the bird turns or shifts. There's something almost ironic about it. The gull, perhaps the most bird-shaped of all birds, can't be properly recognized by bird mode. The camera fails to interpret what it was designed to see. In contrast, animal mode behaves like a seasoned observer. It adapts to shape, distance, and movement, effortlessly keeping the eye in focus. The more this is tested, the more consistent the results become. It raises a question. What exactly is Nikon's bird mode optimized for? Maybe it's built for specific types of birds, small, quick ones, or perhaps those in flight. The photographer wonders if his earlier tests weren't fair because he focused on wading birds, long neck species with a distinct silhouette. But today, his photographing gulls, sandlings, and flycatchers, typical, recognizable species. Still, the pattern doesn't change. Animal mode keeps winning. As the camera pans across the beach, one test follows another. A gull standing still at a distance. Bird mode fails to detect its head. The switch to animal mode brings the eye into perfect focus within a second. It's almost instant. Another test uses wide area large, trying to give the camera more guidance. Bird mode flickers for a moment, captures the eye briefly, and then loses it again. Animal mode. Still perfect. The autofocus box stays glued to the head. At this point, the photographer starts laughing in disbelief. How could bird mode, supposedly the advanced, specialized mode, be less reliable than animal eye tracking. He experiments with different distances. At close range, both modes perform equally well. Bird mode works fine when the bird fills the frame, when the eye is big and obvious. But as soon as the subject moves away, bird mode's accuracy fades. The camera begins to prioritize the body, losing the head or switching to the background. Animal mode, meanwhile, stays consistent. He switches to auto area AF to see if letting the camera decide everything might make a difference. The results are surprising only in their consistency. Bird. Mode recognizes the bird's outline but struggles with detail. Animal mode, on the other hand, zeroes in on the head, even when the bird turns sideways or faces away for a moment. It's as if the algorithm understands anatomy better, recognizing not just the shape but the intention behind movement. The focus box follows the eye naturally, with no hesitation. The lighting conditions are ideal. Soft, 
even light without harsh shadows. Nothing in the foreground to confuse the autofocus. It's a perfect test scenario, clear, direct, and fair. Yet the results don't change. Animal mode wins repeatedly, even across various compositions and focusing distances. It performs predictably in situations where bird mode falters. To push the test further, the photographer switches between 3D tracking, wide area large, and wide area small, all within both modes. The Z9's 3D tracking system is one of its most powerful features, allowing users to maintain focus as subjects move unpredictably. Yet even within this mode, the difference remains. Animal mode tracks the eye from one frame to the next, while bird mode sometimes drifts toward the neck or wings. The inconsistency is impossible to ignore. The photographer summarizes what he sees. At close distances, bird mode does its job well. It identifies the eye, locks on, and keeps it stable. But the moment distance increases, it becomes unreliable. Animal mode, meanwhile, doesn't seem to care about distance. It continues to detect the eye regardless of how small or far the bird becomes in the frame. For wildlife photographers who often work with distant subjects, that reliability matters. He tests different birds, gulls, sandlings, and even a flycatcher. The flycatcher test is particularly telling. With animal mode, the camera finds the head and eye immediately. Switching to bird mode, it misses entirely, focusing instead on the bird's body. When the bird turns, bird mode momentarily detects a head shape, then loses it again. Back to animal mode, instant head and eye lock. It's a repeating pattern that speaks louder than any spec sheet. What's clear now is that Nikon's animal eye tracking system seems more flexible and better trained for a range of shapes and behaviors. Maybe bird mode, while specialized, is limited in its data set or parameters. Perhaps Nikon fine-tuned it for certain species or behaviors, like small, quick movements in flight, but didn't optimize it for stationary or distant birds. The photographer speculates but can't be certain. What's undeniable is the real-world outcome. Animal mode simply works better. It's fascinating because Nikon's firmware updates are supposed to improve subject detection. With version 5.20, users expected better results, especially in bird mode. But this test, performed with that same firmware, suggests otherwise. It's not a question of outdated software. This is the latest, most capable version, and yet animal mode continues to outperform. He doesn't stop there. He checks focus consistency by moving the camera slightly, letting go of focus, and reacquiring. Bird mode hesitates, sometimes shifting the focus to the background. Animal mode snaps back instantly, almost as if it remembers the subject's features. It's intelligent, fluid, and reliable. The difference is small in technical terms but massive in practical use. By the end of the first round of tests, a pattern emerges. Bird mode performs adequately in close proximity, particularly with well-lit, stationary subjects. But in real-world bird photography, where distance, motion, and unpredictability define the experience, animal eye tracking takes the lead. It feels more natural more in tune with how photographers work and how wildlife behaves. The photographer concludes that while both modes have their place, animal mode is the safer, more versatile choice. If a bird is near, both modes succeed. If it's far, animal mode dominates. The logic becomes simple. Why risk losing focus when animal mode consistently delivers? And yet, he remains open-minded. He encourages others to test for themselves, to share results, and to identify situations where bird mode might shine. Perhaps in flight photography, things might be different. Maybe bird mode's algorithm performs better when detecting fast-moving subjects against open skies. But for static or semi-static birds on land or water, the answer seems clear. In this first phase of testing, Nikon's animal eye tracking proves not ONL. Why capable but superior? A reminder that sometimes, simplicity wins. Despite the existence of specialized features, the best tool is often the one that simply works in every scenario. For photographers relying on accuracy, consistency, and confidence, animal mode appears to be that tool.